Hi, in this video we're looking at something called valence electrons. Now we know about protons and neutrons and we also have spent a lot of time on electrons. This video is going to be completely just on electrons and I just want to start with this. We've got up to seven possible electron rings or shells outside the nucleus in any atom. And if I just take sodium as an example, sodium has 11 total electrons, two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and then its 11th electron is all by itself in its third shell. Now, there are four of these seven shells that don't have any electrons in them at all. But the outermost shell that has any electrons, this third shell here with one electron, is what we call the valence shell. And an electron in the valence shell, that one electron that's in this example here, is just simply called a valence electron. Here's another example. Let's say I had beryllium. Beryllium only has four total electrons, two in the first shell and two in its second shell. Because that's the furthest out shell that has electrons in it, we would call this second shell the valence shell. And each of these electrons are simply called valence electrons because they're located in the valence shell. So to review, a valence shell is the outermost occupied shell of an atom. Occupied just means it has at least one electron in it. And then a valence electron is just simply an electron that's located in that valence shell. So why does this matter? How does it help us to know how many valence electrons are in a given atom? Well, I want to actually turn to the periodic table and just point out a couple of the group numbers. First, let me slide helium over so it's next to hydrogen. Uh, it doesn't, of course, stay there, but for this, we can think of it as, as being right next to hydrogen in group 2. But let's just look at group 1, 2, and 13 through 18. All of the elements in group 1 have one valence electron in it. That is, only one electron in their outermost occupied energy shell. All the group 2 elements have two valence electrons. And then if you slide over to group 13, we're skipping over groups 3 through 12 because the D block elements don't have a great uh, pattern there. In group 13, all of those elements have three valence electrons, and in 14 they all have four. And so if you kind of just ignore the one at the beginning of the group number, it'll tell you how many valence electrons are in all the elements contained within that group. There's something that you should know, and it's called the octet rule. The octet rule says that atoms want to gain or lose electrons until their valence shell is full. And for most of the elements on the periodic table, a full valence shell means having eight electrons in their outermost shell, hence the name octet rule, oct meaning eight. The reason why elements want to have a full valence shell is because a full valence shell means that the element is stable. And so all the elements on the periodic table are pursuing this gaining or losing electrons in order to get that valence shell of theirs to be completely filled up. So let's look at an example of sodium again. Sodium has 11 electrons, but only one valence electron, one electron in its outermost occupied energy shell. I'd like to potentially gain seven more electrons to have eight in that third shell, but it's actually much easier for sodium to just get rid of that one electron. If it can do that, then look, its new valence shell becomes the second shell, and the second shell is completely filled up with eight electrons. When sodium has lost an electron, it's become a plus one ion, and it now has a filled valence shell. So sodium loves this. This is great news for sodium. This means that sodium will always want to lose one electron, get a positive one charge, and that will fill its, uh, its valence shell, in this case, the second shell. Let's look at another example. Aluminum has an electron configuration such that there are three valence electrons in the third shell. Aluminum would also like to lose three electrons, and when it does that, it, just like the sodium example, has eight electrons in its second shell and aluminum would form a three plus charge. It would also have a filled valence shell. So both of these elements we've looked at so far are metals. Sodium and aluminum are both metals. And it's not a surprise that they both have done similar things. They both have wanted to lose electrons to get a full valence shell. Let's just take a look at some trends across the periodic table here. If I'm an element that has uh, one, two, or three valence electrons, I'm a metal in most cases. And therefore, those elements are going to want to lose their one or their two or their three valence electrons 
to get a filled valence shell that's kind of lying in wait underneath. Let's look at an example of uh, non-metal. Chlorine is a good example of a non-metal. Uh, it has seven valence electrons. It doesn't want to lose those seven electrons. It's much easier for it to just gain one. So chlorine does exactly that. Where did that electron come from? Probably from a metal that wanted to lose an electron. Wink, wink, this is where we're starting to get some bonds coming in. More on that later on. But when I've gained an electron, if I'm chlorine, that means I have a minus one charge. And if I have a minus one charge, that means I'm an anion. But now look, chlorine also has a filled valence shell. So chlorine wants to gain electrons, just like actually all the other nonmetals. So if I've got five, six, or seven valence electrons, which is most of the uh, nonmetals, I'm going to want to gain some electrons to get to that magic number eight. Now you might be thinking, well, what happens if I've got four valence electrons? Do I want to lose or do I want to gain electrons? And really the truth is it can kind of go either way. Uh, sometimes if, I, if you're an element that has four valence electrons, like carbon, for example, you'd rather actually just share electrons with other elements. But more on that as we get along. If I have eight valence electrons, what do I think I'd want to do? Well, nothing. I'm already all set. And so that's actually group 18, the noble gases. This is the reason that noble gases do not uh, like to bond with any other element because they already have a full valence shell. What do they have to bond with any other element for? So that's it. Those are valence electrons. A bit about the octet rule. It's the motivation behind a bonding, which is our next stop in the course. Thank you.